All right, good morning everybody. Welcome to another round of Coffee and Questions. It's the weekend, got a few hours free, thought we'd have some fun. I'm going to talk about wood lathe and kind of like a hobby or also like a side gig to make a few extra bucks. Not necessarily a living. I got a full-time job just like everybody else, but this is fun. It does help fuel, you know, tool purchases and materials and it's just kind of fun to do having a wood lathe. Now in the last video we talked about owning a bench top lathe and you can make lots of small projects and I can tell you something right now I've made both small projects and big large projects um, you know big I mean tall like vases or vessels or whatever you want to call them small sells easier than large a lot easier because the large ones of course are going to cost a lot more money but anyway back to the lathe what I have here we're going to get right to it I have a square piece of firewood. Uh, this I believe is mesquite. Yeah, it is. Okay. So lots of videos out there on wood turning. I'm going to use a spindle gouge. This is a Harbor Freight special, one that everybody criticizes and everything else, but it does work. You just have to sharpen it more frequently. Good news behind that, you'll get good at sharpening. Okay. That's a whole different topic, another video. I'm going to use a spindle gouge. This is not a bowl gouge. Don't try to use this to hollow the inside of bowls. That would be dangerous. Spindle gouge for spindle work right here. I'm going to take off all these edges and I'm going to make this round. There are plenty of videos out there on this. So it's, uh, I'll show you a little bit here real quick when I start, but then I'll stop it. I'll wait till it's round. I'll come back. We'll have a discussion and we're just having fun. Okay, here we go. Let me pan in and show you. So now I've gotten it nice and round, and I'm going to create a tenon on here, and that tenon will be used to go into a chuck that I have. I'll show you that here in just a second. Okay, that's the size of the tenon. I'm just using a caliper. I'm using a carbide tool. It's faster for me. Alright, now I have a set of jaws that requires a dovetail here. So I just grab one of my tools. I've got another Harbor Freight angle one here. I'm just going to create a tenon right in here. A dovetail. Doesn't take too much effort. There you go. So I'm going to stop it now. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my chuck jaws. I've got some here. I'll show you. It's like that. So I take it off. Here's my chuck. I'm going to put it on. I just put them on by hand. And then I snug it down, just like that. Chuck jaws, I open them up. I put it in here loosely, like this. And I already got the little hole up in here where we originally started this, with it, this made in it, that little dimple, that little dot. So, bring it up into that little dot. Just like that. Tighten the tailstock here. Get a couple of turns back here, make sure it's good and secure. Then I go ahead and I tighten this. That way the chuck jaws are sitting flat against the face of this wood. That's the way you want it to create the best securement. Bring the tool rest up here. I bring it up real close, just like that. Spin it by hand, just for safety. Tighten everything down. Make sure you got everything good and tight. So we're just playing around. So the decision becomes like on a lot of vessels and things, they will make the top like one third versus two thirds. Uh, yeah, you can do that. But like in this, if I want a top for it, you either have to have more of the same wood, and I'm not sure that I do 
or you don't create a top on it, but that, you know, it's your choice. But the next step here is I'm gonna create the bottom of this. So I use a parting tool. That's what this is. see right here it's got a bad gouge thing we've got to kind of shape and get that out of here and we can still reshape everything um, don't worry about coming down too narrow here you can always boost with the parting tool your cut up higher to make you know the bottom look right but we need to get this out of here right now it's a big bad imperfection this is also very porous wood it's also got a big crack in it right here that we'll try to do something with in a second but let's get this out first So all I did there was with this carbide tool, or you could use any one of your tools, I just went back and forth like this. You can use a gouge. You can use some of the other scrapers. Okay, I got that bad mark out. Now we have to now take care of these really bad cracks right here. And say, how are we gonna do that? And then we gotta blend this all back in and make it look like a vessel again. Well, the first thing I do I use stick fast, everything will be in the link below. I go ahead and I just put, just kind of drench it. It doesn't matter right now if it gets onto the wood anywhere or what it does because we still got a lot of cutting and sanding to do to get this where I want. But I pre-fill these cracks with a decent amount of it and I leave it alone and I let it dry for several minutes. You can use that activator spray, I don't use that, I just use this. Just leave it on there and then I can turn around like this. And I just put some of the same kind of uh, shavings and sawdust, I mean on this like this, 
just tap it on there a little bit right okay now with that tapped on there and I've already put the CA glue on it once I do it again just takes a couple of drops this stuff does go a long way you can get it off of Amazon sure bonds another good one I just use stick fast I mean something I've used in the past it tends to work good so let's leave that alone I'll be back in a few minutes with you we'll go from there now I don't go that far in right now I'm going to use this portion up in here this is going to be for a top we're going to make for it so I'm going to bring this down a little bit more right here but this will be the bottom then we're going to start hollowing So that won't be bad. That should look pretty good. It's got this nice figure in it here and here. We got that crack still that we'll deal with. And so it looks pretty good the way that it is. So now we'll worry about the hollowing part. The way that I do it, I'm going to get the tail stock here out of the way. And I'm going to bring this down and shape the opening and the rest of this the way that I want it. So let's work on that right now. Okay, now this is a bowl gouge. This is about a half inch. I got a hammer drill and I got a bit on here and I'm going to figure out my depth. That's about right, right where it is. Now before I get too carried away, I mean, I want to go ahead and I want to fix the outside of the opening here make it the way that I want. I'll probably put a little bit of a flat surface right here so that when I make the top it sits on there nicely. So I'll bring this up. Now I have not thinned the wall here at all. It's still pretty dang thick. If it was thin and you try to mess around with this you can crack it, split it. This is just the way I do it. And I stick my finger in there. I can feel that I've gotten all the way to the bottom. You want to figure the depth. Stick your finger in there. Go like this. Yep, on the outside I can see I'm pretty much down to here. That's good enough, okay? We're not making this like, you know, super, super tolerance and tight. So you got a good depth. I got a decent little wall thickness in here right now. More needs to be taken out, but I'm gonna clean this up on the outside. Here's my Harbor Freight tools. I mean, one of them I ground to be a bedan, which is just a flat, nice flat one here. This one's got a bull nose. You could use either one, I mean, to touch up the outside of this. I want to use a square one because I want to make that flat surface here. I'm telling you that. So. Yeah, got the nice flat area, got the nice opening. So now you can stick your finger in here and you know that you've got big thickness all through here. We want the inside, if you can, to be fairly consistent wall thickness, okay? So you can get in here with a gouge. I would tell you use a bull gouge or you can get in here with a scraper and you can start taking this out slowly but stop it frequently to check it or you might have a hollowing tool with a laser on it you'll see a lot of guys on YouTube have that and I'll go ahead and hook one up but the old-fashioned way when I first started is I just kept feeling this and another tool you can use is like a pair of calipers but I found that to be a little cumbersome, you know, and so I made some of my own specialty tools for different things. I'll show you one of them. So you can make something like this. It's just a flat piece of wood with a hole in it and a dowel. And you can go ahead and you can put it in here like this and you can tap on this until the board runs flush with the mouth of the opening. Pull it out and turn around and set it up on there. And you can see where your depth is that way. All right, stick my finger in there. Look, it comes all the way up to here or use that wood thing I told you to make. On the outside, depth is good. It's right to here now. We're good. Wall thickness is consistent, but it's still thick. Okay, so you want to keep working at this till you get the wall thickness the way that you want. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'll be back with you in a few minutes. Okay, I've set up the hollowing tool to show you. If you're doing it by hand, it's going to take you longer because you've got to constantly keep feeling that wall thickness. Now, I don't make mine super thin like some of the turners, wood turners do because they become fragile. I don't see the sense in it. I make them a little bit thicker. And this 
this is a good strong wood, mesquite strong. I still make them a little bit thicker in case somebody was to drop it or something, hopefully they don't bust it, because if you do make them thin, you run that risk. Now, I have the cutter set up, I have the laser, you can see it right here on my hand. That's going to tell me, based on the cutting edge, where my wall thickness is, and I've sprayed some WD-40 in here just to make this dried piece of kind of concrete wood. I start at the top, I adjust the cutter, and I do the top portion, then I adjust the cutter, and then I start working on the sides, and when I get down to the bottom, I adjust the cutter outward, and I work on that bottom transition. Now the very bottom, I reach in there with a scraper and go up and down, and that flattens out the inside bottom of this, and then you're done. I'll be right back. Okay, so now you've got it hollowed, you can reach in there and feel and the bottom has still got like a dimple. I can't show you with the camera, but it sticks out. So I'm gonna reach in there real quick. You can use any kind of a scraping tool you want. Flat nose one, this is a carbide one, but I could have used one of the other ones. I can feel it. So this is done by feel. Yeah, I can reach in there now with my finger and I can feel that surface is totally flat because of the scraping tool we used. All right, so we're good and we're ready to start thinking about the sanding. Now some people sand the outside first before they hollow it. I don't do that in case something goes wrong with the wood. I didn't waste the time sanding. So let's get this out of the way. Now sanding videos can be fairly boring. I'm going to shut off the camera. I'm going to sand this. I'll start because it's so porous. And some of these areas are punky, meaning the area, you know, the area was weak and it flew out just because it wasn't very strong in that area of the wood. But uh, yeah, it's got a lot of open grain spots. So I'll start off with 80 grit. And I'm going to go to 120, 150 or 180. I'm going to come up to 220. Then I'm going to turn around and come to 320. And then I'll come back to you on the video and we'll discuss the finish. See you in just a minute. Okay, everybody. So this is the end of part one. I mean, I got it all the way up to the point where we're going to start doing the finishing work, which is what... I'll probably do several videos on so i hope you click subscribe i hope you keep following me i'll put part two up within the next day or two and i'll show you the sanding and i'll show you the finishing techniques that we go through or i go through and i hope you enjoy the video all right i'll see you soon and like i said don't forget click subscribe drop me a question if you need to i'll see you in the next video